2013, 90% of the transactions were cash based and only 5% of them took place digitally. So how did India transform from being a cash based economy to a fintech hotspot? It was the UPI. Now we can transfer money and pay bills without cash or credit card. A digital transformation is made possible with an evolving digital architecture. In today's episode of Future Shapers, we have Ashwin Atri taking us on an interesting journey about digital architecture. So let's explore. Welcome to the show, Ashwin. Digital architecture is transforming our daily lives. Can you tell us about what qualifies for a good digital architecture? In my view, a good digital architecture is something that has set itself up for evolution. If you tick all the right boxes, but you have not set yourself up for evolution, you're being very rigid and thus you're limiting its applications and usage. Second in line is the degree of clarity the architecture has to all the people that are involved the amount of clarity that it gives it to the business analysts, to the developers who basically understand, go and implement them. So the degree of clarity is very important in an architecture. And the architecture needs to be secure by design and should be able to arrest cascading failures. And finally, the architecture is, needs to be in a way that it is testable by design. There's a lot of time and effort, money spent around testing applications, so it has to be testable by design. These, in my view, are some of the good qualities that a digital architecture should have. How has digital architecture evolved over the years? Most businesses today want to have the first in market tag associated for their products. So there's a lot of emphasis about quickly and continuously engineering, testing and delivering applications. So hence a lot of work and a lot of evolution has gone around how architectures have separated development and operations. Earlier, uh, most of the architectures used to have macro components with them and the definitions were on how they interacted and behaved with each other. Now with the advent of cloud native architectures, Kubernetes, containers, service meshes, which are basically the de facto choices for building enterprise architectures. Nowadays what we're trying to do is break all these macro components into simpler micro components and have finer control over them. With this kind of an approach, it gives us a larger handle to manage the situation, you know, especially in cases like we're supporting 25 to 30 million people for a particular you know, app or a streaming application. This gives us a lot of handle to manage these kind of scenarios. It gives us a lot of handle to arrest failures, give us the ability to scale applications. So breaking down larger components into simpler, finer components is basically how things have been evolving with the digital architecture. How has LTTS transformed a client's problem using digital architecture? For one of our communication technology client, we built an e-commerce website with a robust digital architecture, which basically had a dynamic front end, a robust middleware, and a scalable back end. So they already had a system which was overly layered and you know a lot of problems and being cumbersome for all the members involved. So with digital architecture being there, it provided an omni-channel experience to everybody involved with the application. The digital architecture was in three perspectives basically. So we approached the problem in a domain-driven manner with an event-driven architecture. So we basically looked at three macro domains from concept to uh, product, product, uh, in product being in the market, and then product being ordered, and until activation. So we've looked at three different domains. We took up these domains, broken them down into different subdomains, put microservices around it. For orchestrating these microservices, we brought in a workflow manager. So workflow manager being the heart of the system and the microservices being around these systems, we were able to deliver a dynamic solution, which is currently, you know, in in use right now. What do you see in the future of digital architecture? In my personal view, uh, I see that the digital architectures will be more inspired from nature, uh, meaning it will be more adaptable, evolvable and decentralized. With the rising popularity of low-code, no-code platforms, emphasis will be more around cutting down on the turnaround time. With hybrid and polycloud coming into foray, we see that most architectures will be complying to CNCF guidelines and toolkits. With Web 3.0 coming in, we see that transnational based economics and blockchain may have a center stage. That was a great insight about the world of digital architecture, Ashwin. Thank you so much for your time. This brings us to the end of today's episode. Until next time.